Christ. Jody Brown happened to bring her here. I wish I got a look at him. You know, she isn't really hurt outside of some bruises, but I've never seen anyone so worn out. Well, I guess I'd best go talk to Jody. Can I go with you, Pop? It won't take me long to get dressed. You stay right here. I don't suppose I can talk you out of it. Well, Becky, I've got to find out what happened to her, where she came from. I know, but Jody's more likely to set his dog on you than talk. Now, you could wait and let her tell you. Well, there may be other people who need help. You know, Becky, it just don't make sense. Strange woman out here all by herself. But why can't I go with you? Because your ma said no, and she's right. But I've never seen a hermit. Cincinnati says nobody's seen Jody Brown up close for years. Henry Carter says he looks like a wolf, fangs and all. He sleeps all day and sits up all night. And he lives on snake meat. And you know that he's as mean as a... Israel! 
Now, son, you know better than to carry gossip, and especially the kind Henry Carter puts out. Jody Brown does not have fangs, and I doubt very much if he has an appetite for snake meat. And the way he lives, well, that's his own choosing, and he's got a right to it. Just wanted to look at him, that's all. I understand, son. And I hope you will someday. I hope we all will. That's got to be Jody's decision. Suppose Jody Brown sleeps in that little hut and won't let anybody near him? Oh, I think, dear, because he feels he can't face up to people. Because he's so ugly? No. He wasn't always the way he is now. As I recall, he was a fine-looking man. What happened? A Shawnee raiding party attacked his cabin and killed his wife. Jody wasn't home. Your pa told him that he couldn't have done anything to save her. But Jody wouldn't listen. So he crawled into that cabin and shut himself away from all of us. He didn't even take the arrows out of the walls or fix the gash in the roof they'd made. That was three years ago. Jody! Jody Brown! Jody, it's Daniel Boone. I've got to talk to you. What have you got to then but make it fast? Can't you tip for this hound some? Fast, I said. Jody. You know I wouldn't come out here less than I had to. Now, what happened last night? Where did that woman come from? I can't say. Can't? Or won't? Can't say because I don't know. Well, you brought her to my cabin. Where did you find her? I didn't find her. She just turned up. Jody? You've shut yourself off out here, and whether I like it or not, I've got to respect it. You've hurt no one but yourself, up to now. Now, would you please tell me what happened? She came out of the wood yonder. It was just before first light, it was. The hound set to hollering and woke me up. I sure didn't have any idea it was a woman. Said she was lost. And then she... She kept right on coming. Up to here. By the time I got outside, she passed out. Well, did you see anyone else around? Was she alone? Not as far as I know. I didn't look for anyone. I just... Carried her directly to your place. And that's all there was to it. Well, how did she get that far without your hound jumping her? I don't know. I can't make sense of it. The dog, he just... I don't know. with questions, Dan, until she's stronger. Oh, it's perfectly all right. Oh, here, let me help you. Oh, thank you. Oh. 
Oh. Oh. Well, it's mighty nice oh. seeing you look so chipper. Oh, yes. I, I can imagine how chipper I look. Uh, Mr. Uh... Boone. Daniel Boone. Oh. Uh, was it your cabin I came to last night, Mr. Boone? Yes, uh, eventually. But uh, it's a long story, and Becky's right. You shouldn't do much talking for a while. Only thing I'd appreciate knowing was, is there anyone with you? Someone else who might be in trouble? Uh, no, Mr. Boone. I, I, I was alone. Uh. Daniel Boone! Daniel Boone! Well, they're Creeks, aren't they? I know one of them. He's the chief's eldest son. I'm going out there and talk to him. You keep an eye on the conversation. Mom? What's wrong? Not a thing, Israel. Set the table, please. It is good to see Daniel Boone once again. Well, oh, Daniel Boone is honored that you think so. Tachi, how have you been? Well, this brave is called Kaweta. Welcome. Would you like to come inside for some hot food? We cannot stay. We came only to return the horse to its owner. I don't think offhand that I've ever seen this horse before. Three days ago, we saw a woman riding on this horse. She was afraid of us and rode away fast. She was torn from the saddle by a tree branch. We tried to help, but she ran. We did not want you to think we had stolen the horse. Oh, I would never have thought that. And I want to thank you for all the trouble you've gone to. Uh, Tachi, I thought most of the braves were still on the winter hunt. It is true. Kavita and I were called back from the hunt by my father. Some kind of trouble? The kind of trouble that comes when the young men are away. A wild beast has been attacking our village. Three of our tribe have been killed. What kind of beast? So far, I've seen only his tracks. It is a cat of some sort, a large one. We will catch and kill him and then return to the hunt for food. Well, Tachi, I've seen you track off enough to know that you don't need my help. If there's anything I can do, I'd be pleased. Thank you. Oh, is something wrong? No, not a thing. Except my husband seems to have ended up with a horse. Oh. Uh. This look familiar? Well, who brought it? It's Creek Braves. They brought your horse, too. Indians? Did you ever run in with the Indians? Oh, let the girl eat, both of you. That's all eat. I've spent most of my life in the company of these two books. Meals included. <laughs> the Bible and the New England Primer. You're from New England? Yes, Israel, Connecticut. What's a Primer? Oh, Israel, not now. No, it's all right. A Primer, Israel, is the Bible of the classroom. I'm a school teacher by profession. A school teacher? Well, a school teacher is what everybody in Boonesboro wishes for most. Really? Well, almost everybody. Oh. <laughs> Please. You're very kind people. All of you. I'm not used to such... Beats me how anybody can be scared of Indians and not scared of Jody Brown's dog. Of what? 
We'll discuss it later. I never hope to see this horse again. In all truth, Mr. Boone, I never even hoped to see the light of day. I'd been spared, and I can't think why. Well, you could have been spared a great deal of trouble if you hadn't run from the Indians. You must have been wandering in these woods for at least a couple of days. But I still don't understand. I was told that Indians would kill me and, and steal what little I had. Well, in time of war, they might. But we happen to be at peace with the Creeks. Of course, you had no way of knowing that. Well, I should have. I can see now. I was wrong to believe the judgment of others. If we treat each other as if we were always at war, we might all wander in the woods forever. Oh, I'm sorry for the lecture. That's a bad habit of mine. Faith, how'd you happen to be riding the wilderness trail all by yourself? Well, I was uh, part of a wagon caravan going to Virginia. But uh, there was some trouble. Oh, it, it was just a misunderstanding, really. But they chose to think otherwise. Well, one of the men was kind enough to set me on the trail to Boonesboro. I hope perhaps I could make a place for myself. Well, a lot of us here have done just that. Mr. Boone. Daniel. Oh, thank you. Do you suppose someone in your settlement could use a good horse? Well, there's always someone. You mentioned a uh, Cincinnatus. Yes, he's a, he's a friend of mine. I thought maybe I'd speak to him about a room for you, if you're sure you won't stay with us a while longer. Oh, I'm sure. Perhaps when you go to the fort, you could see the horse gets a good master. Let me see what I can do. Oh, Mr. Boone. Uh, Daniel, uh, when you mount him, be careful of his ribs. They're bruised, and he kicks if you dig your knee in too hard. Well, the men in the wagon caravan didn't understand that. They thought he was off his head. They were going to shoot him. They let me have him instead. Well, it's lucky you know something about horses. Well, I'd never been on one before in my life. Well, then how did you... Well, I... I just seem to sense it. Oh, you fool. Doth play and after slay. <laughs> doth. It's just a different word uh, for saying does. Well, go on, Israel. You're doing very well. The dog will bite a thief at night. Miss Faith, was Jody Brown's dog asleep when you got there the other night? No. But then I wasn't a thief, was I? Israel, what comes after the letter D? E. Cincinnati says he's a hermit, and Henry Carter says he sleeps all day and sits up all night. But Pa says I oughtn't to carry tales. Well, your Pa's right. Israel, you're supposed to be showing Miss Faith how well you can read. Shorty knows what a busybody you are. <laughs> a boy with no curiosity makes a poor student. From what I can see, Israel is an excellent one. You're very lucky, Rebecca. Thank you, Faith. Just wish you'd waited till the boy was out of the room to say that. Oh, if you two ladies would like to talk, I'd be happy to leave. Well, I haven't got a bell to ring, but school's out for the day, Israel. Thank you. I'll see you later. Yes, you 
you're uh, you're very lucky, Rebecca. Uh, this man, uh, Jody Brown, I think I ought to go and tell him how grateful I am. But Jody's not the kind of man to accept someone's gratitude. Must be lonely for him. Where does he live? Oh, Faith, Dan's tried. Everyone's tried. Yes, but I really think I should. the cat had the mind of a human. I've hunted many cats, but never one that could see through brush as thick as that. The cat cannot be killed at close range, Father. Today I will journey to the fort and trade for rifles, then I will hunt him again. not told your father everything. It's wise not to alarm the very old. But I am young enough to hear. Tell me, what else about the cat? He is black, as I thought. But he is still only a cat. He can be killed like any other. It may be that you are right. How many black cats has Tachi ever hunted before? Or even seen before? I have heard. I have seen. We will hunt it together. Mr. Brown! What's wrong? Are you sick? Are you hurt? Oh, you're burning hot as a stove. Got a room, I guess. Worse, maybe. I'll be back soon. It's a woman old Jody Brown slung on Dan Boone's doorstep. Uh, Mr. Cincinnatus. That's his place right there. Oh. My name's Henry Carter. How do you do? Oh, yes, the Boones speak of you often. That right. Uh, my name is... Uh... Somebody get a rifle. He 
must have followed me in. <laughs> now go on back. Your master's sick and he shouldn't be left alone. Go on. Oh, all right. I won't be long. <laughs> he won't hurt you. Now you sit right there and wait. Cincinnati. Yeah, don't tell I'm... me. Don't tell me. Your faith grizzled, right? <laughs> Daniel said you wasn't coming in till tomorrow. Oh, well, how, how do oh. you do? <laughs> do you have any snake root? I beg your pardon? Snake root. It's an herb. Snake root. Well, now, take a look. Oh, please do. Um, I couldn't interest you in just a plain mug of coffee, could I? Oh, it isn't for me. Jody Brown's got a fever. Jody Brown? Yes. And uh, while you're looking, I'll need some uh, molasses and some India rum. India rum, hmm? I could uh, use a drop of that myself. Can't be Jody's hound. Just a look alike. Suffering devils. She's gone and tamed that beast. Seen this sort of thing before. It's called animal magnetism. Ain't more than a dozen people in the whole world got it. But when they do, ain't a beast in creation can touch them. All right, Mr. Brown. Who are you? Uh, I'm the woman you carried to the Boones that night. I came back to thank you for your kindness. Now, swallow this down. Why? Do you know what a virulent throat is? If you don't get out of here, I'm... A virulent throat is caused by a high fever, and you've got both. Now, swallow this down, then you can lie back. Go I'm not going to... That tastes awful! Yes, I know. I wouldn't give you that. If I could find anything better. This place looks like a battlefield. Quiet down. Dreadful things. Sit down.
understand? Creeks want to have a talk. When? They want to talk right now. We ask favor of Daniel Boone. Without his help, we are in grave danger. Tachi has already told you of the great panther who walks in these woods. He has. He is black. He has killed four times. I have not caught him. You will. No! Daniel Boone, you must listen. Our chief, in his wisdom, has decreed that we make peace with the animal. I don't quite understand. The wild man who lives near the fort, Jody Brown, has made a great mistake. It has cost us four lives. But we wish peace. We ask Daniel Boone to talk to this man. Tell him that his wife did not die at the hand of the Creeks, but of the Shawnee. But he knows that. Then why does he bring a witch to this country to destroy our tribe with a devil cat? We have seen her enter his home. We have seen her talk to his wild dog as though it were a child. We have seen her clear the arrows from the wall. We ask you, in friendship, tell this man that we share his grief for his wife. Tell him that we wish him well, but tell him that he must send the witch and the devil cat to take revenge upon the Shawnee and trouble us no further. I wish no quarrel with the council. But that woman is not a witch. And that cat is not a devil. We should all hunt him together. That is my answer. Daniel Boone has listened. We have listened. The council is over. Perhaps all this will seem foolish by daylight. I hope so. You again. Me again? You've been a very sick man, Mr. Brown. It's a wonder to me you survived such a fever. Thank the Lord, it broke last night. You've been resting easy all the morning. You had no call to come here. Well, that may be true, but I did. I couldn't leave you to die here. It would have been a blessing. Now, that is a sinful thing to say, Geordie Brown. For a little old slip of a woman, you talk mighty loud. Well, temper's a good sign. <laughs> You're getting back your strength. <laughs> oh, dear. wasn't born that could make a fire burn proper. A man wasn't born that couldn't. The trouble with this fire is the only one that's at least trying to make it burn is a woman. No fire will draw right unless it has three good logs. Oh, I'll try to remember that, Mr. Brown. Cincinnatus and, and Daniel and any number of your friends have asked about you. I'm sure you know they want you to come back to them. Don't you sermonize. And don't you feel sorry for me. Oh, 
I don't. I envy you. Your people want you. You belong somewhere. You have a place to go. I was cast out of my home, my town. There, there was a petition. I don't want to hear about it. Well, there's nobody else I can talk to who would understand. The petition said, blighted, profane, unblessed, born evil. All because I have a way with animals. There was a fox in my town and a horse in the wagon caravan. And, and now, your dog. Suddenly, people that had known me declared that I was unfit to teach little children. Well, I don't know why animals don't hurt me. I just wish I had that kind of a way with people. Oh, I have no right to bore you with my troubles. Well, now that you can do for yourself, I'll let you be. You won't be coming back again, will you? What's your name? Faith. God bless you. Goodbye. If I live to be 109, I'll never forget the way she made that animal mine. Now, I have personally seen that dog chase a grizzly bear halfway back to Florida. And that was when he was a pup. Cincinnati, am I lying? Oh, I've never heard you tell a lie before, Henry. You should say not. And the reason for that is that when that tongue of yours starts working, these ears of mine stop. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, I hear tell you've been out trekking that there panther. Well, tell me, Henry. Did I get him? <laughs> Got you that time. Ran a little low and shot. Never know what you'd do that for, Daniel. Well, he's not an easy target, but he's slowing down a little bit. I think he's getting careless backtracking. How's Faith getting along? Faith? Why, ain't she still out to your place? How many rifles did Tachi trade for? Ooh, just two. Daniel, you don't think them engines. Well, she could still be up at Jody Brown's. You know, he, he could have took worse or something. Well, let's hope she is. In the meantime, you better keep all this to yourself. I'll be back one way or another. If she stays within the circle, she has no power over her own double cat. If the cat comes upon her, it will kill her. We must go to higher ground and wait. Has something happened to... to that woman? I'm not sure. Hardly be out looking dark at night unless... Thank you, Jody. Daniel!
Well, you ought to talk to me. Tell me something. Well, she tended me when I was sick to death. It's the least I could. Has something happened to Faith? I don't know. But you suspect or you wouldn't be out looking. What do you suspect? All right, Jody, I think maybe you ought to know. Maybe the Creeks carried her off to their camp. They think that she's a witch. They also think you brought her here for revenge. You mean for... There's a black cat around here killing their people right and left. They think she has some kind of power over it. But why? Why would they think that? Because... Because they saw her with your dog. I'll let you know, Jody. <laughs> She is not here. What's going on? They are praying. I know that, but what for? They are praying that the medicine of the witch will destroy itself. They can do nothing but pray. They must not watch. Only the medicine man and the chief. And why not the chief's son? Because I believe, as you do, that she is no witch. They have staked her in the clearing where Kaweto was killed. And they are hiding in the brush, watching to see if the cat will come to her rescue. And if he doesn't? They will burn her when daylight comes. You're just going to stand here and let it happen? I am not the chief. And I cannot kill the cat. No, I suppose you can't. Not if you've talked yourself into believing that you can't. Tachi, will you show me where the clearing is? Never mind, I'll find it for myself. You will stay here. I thought you said you didn't believe that she was a witch. But I believe that if you stake out live bait, a panther will come down to take it, then it will be close enough to kill. My people must be free of this panther. If your people do it this way, they'll only be safe until the next time your village is threatened. I'm going to go now, Tachi, and if you figure on pulling that trigger, I'd appreciate it if you'd make it a clean shot. You used to be a fine hunter. Boom! Follow me. All of you! from that cabin, and I clean forgot my rifle. <laughs> he took a lot of killing. But he died like any other cat. 
And the woman lives, does she not? I have eyes. Uh, why? Uh, uh, listen, uh, this here bear and throat, it feels a sight better. Quit staring at me. That goes for everybody. Can't you, she's gonna faint. No, I'm not. Chief? Mm-hmm. Do you know that Henry Carter says he's more than 500 years old? And he hasn't said a thing for more than 200 years. Well, now, you know that's not exactly true. Matter of fact, he said something yesterday. What did he say? Well, he said something about public spankings for Henry Carter and all the other gossips in Kentucky. Wasn't so much what he said, but the devilish way he said it. If you don't mind, I'll sit just a few more minutes. The fire's so cheerful. Well, anytime you're ready, I'll be glad to. Jody. Daniel. Rebecca. Evening, Miss Faith. Uh, Jody, I don't know whether you remember my boy, Israel. Israel? I was just passing by, and it occurred to me that uh, Miss Faith might be here and uh, might be wanting someone to walk her back to the settlement. Oh, well, it, it occurred to you just right, Mr. Brown. tomorrow. Well, young man, is that what you thought a hermit would look like? No. You know, but then Judy Brown's really not a hermit, because hermits don't go walking around with school teachers. No, no, it's expressly against the hermit's book of regulations. <laughs> Any more of that pie? Mm, I think so. You know, it just can't depend on anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> 